I want to make a little bit of a note that should have been in the last video, but there's one more thing that's kind of important. With the central limit theorem with sampling distributions, when you have a nice large sample when n is greater than or equal to 30 is a, is a good cutoff, it's a very commonly used cutoff. What's also really nice is the sample standard deviation, because you're taking so many sample points, that's close enough to the population standard deviation that you can use one to estimate the other. So when you have a nice large sample, even if you don't know the population standard deviation, you can use the sample standard deviation as a stand-in. If n is small, if it's less than 30, this doesn't hold, and we'll learn how to deal with situations like that in the future. But for now, let's look at this example of sampling distributions. So let's say we have a population distribution. We don't know what it looks like, but we know the mean and the standard deviation of it. So maybe our population distribution looks something like this. Maybe it's kind of skewed, but whatever it is, we know it has a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 14. It might look different, maybe it looks more normal, maybe it looks even wackier, like I'm going to draw in blue. We don't know. All we know is that it has a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 14. Now, we're asked if we take a sample of 49 observations, what's the probability that the sample mean, so the mean of those 49 observations, is between 6 and 8? So we notice the sample size. That's kind of key. As soon as we see that number 49, that's bigger than 30. We like that. When we see that being bigger than 30, we're thinking central limit theorem, and our life becomes very easy because we know the sampling distribution is going to be normal. So we can think about it as a normal distribution, and we also know the standard error or sample sampling distribution standard deviation as well. So as soon as I see that, I know that whatever this distribution is up here, I know that the sample distribution is going to have the same mean. The sampling distribution is going to have the same mean, but it's going to look normal. And it's going to have a smaller standard deviation than the original distribution. This original distribution, the population distribution, let's say it's the red one here, had a standard deviation of 14. But remember, your points here are indeed averages or means of 49 observations. So heuristically you can think of any you know, probably large values are going to kind of get cancelled out in quotes by um, small values in the mean so the observations in your sampling distribution these means are going to be closer together there's going to be less spread than in the original distribution so by the central limit theorem we know that the mean is going to be 10 we know that the standard deviation is going to be 14 over root n, root 49. So that's 14 over root of 49 is 7, so that's 2. So we know that this sampling distribution is a normal distribution with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 2. So that's great. So, now that we know that, what do we want to find? We want to find, and maybe I'll write down here just so we have it. It's going to be a normal distribution. And that's by the central limit theorem. We have a nice big sample size. So we're looking for the probability that... the mean of any sample we pick is going to be between 6 and 8. So again, we're going to have to convert to the standard normal distribution and then use our tables. So let's go ahead and do this. 
So for 6, we have z is 6 minus the mean, which is 10, over our standard error, or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is 2. And so that's 6 minus 10 is negative 4. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, or 2 standard deviations, 2 standard errors below the mean. And similarly, for 8, 8 is 1 standard error below the mean, so it has a z-score of negative 1. So we're looking for the probability that z is between negative 2 and negative 1. So this is a lot like our previous lecture where we were finding areas under normal distributions. So let's start a new slide and do it on the next page. So we know that we're looking for the probability that z is between negative 2 and negative 1. So let's draw our distribution here. And it's a standard normal, so it has a mean of 0. And here is negative 1. Here is negative 2. And we're looking for this area that I'm highlighting in blue. OK. And then using our table, remember we can find the area to the left of any z-score using our standard normal table. So we're looking for the area to the left of negative 1 minus the area to the left of negative 2. And I'll leave that as a little exercise for you guys, but you should find that you get 0 0.1361. So the probability that our sample mean is between 6 and 8 is about 13.6% rounding to one decimal place in percent. So now let's do a part B here. Let's pretend that the population distribution was a normal distribution. Remember, in the last example, we didn't know what it looked like. But let's say we know it's normal. What's the probability that an individual observation is between 6 and 8? And if we think about this, remember, that the mean of our population distribution was 10, and the standard deviation of our population distribution was 14. This is the overlying distribution, not the sampling distribution, which the elements are averages. This is just the population distribution. This is a lot like the previous video, where we're just drawing one thing, not a sample. So let's kind of draw a little bit of a diagram here. If this is our population distribution, we know it has a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 14. I'll just draw the sampling distribution here, just so you can kind of see the difference. Well, we know that the sampling distribution has the same mean, but it is a lot narrower. It's a lot less spread out because kind of big and large uh, sorry, large and small elements that you're drawing from your sample are likely to get quote unquote canceled out when you um, determine the mean of 49 elements. So with 6 and 8, if this was 8 and that's 6 in the sampling distribution, well, just looking in the population distribution. It looks like this is more towards the center of the data set in some sense. So let's figure it out in terms of z-scores. Remember, we're not doing a sampling distribution. We're just doing an individual observation. So our sample, you can think of it as a sampling distribution of 1 if you like, but really it's just a regular old 
normal distribution. So there's no taking a sample, we're just calculating. So we're looking for the probability that one individual element is between 6 and 8. And again, let's use the language of Z scores here. So at 6, we have the data point minus the mean over the standard deviation, which in this case is 14. Which, if you calculate this, is roughly negative 0 0.2. Nine, and when z is eight, or sorry, when x is eight, when our data point is eight, and we're solving for the z. Well, if we calculate this, this is negative zero point one four. So this is between point one four standard deviations below the mean and point two nine standard deviations below the mean. So we're looking for the probability that we're between 0 0.29 standard deviations below the mean and 0 0.14 standard deviations below the mean. And I'll color in the area we're looking for, of course. It's that area there. And if we look this up in our table, of course, this is going to be all rated right again, the probability that said is less than negative 0 0.14 minus the probability that Z is less than negative 0 0.29, just using our techniques from the previous lecture. So this is going to be 0 0.44433 minus 0 0.38. 591 using our table, which gives us 0 0.05842, so about a 5.8% probability. So that's kind of the difference between population distributions and sampling distributions. And in the upcoming classes, we'll talk about some more sampling distributions where we have small samples and how to deal with cases like that.